guys, welcome to Waste Not Wednesday. We go live every Wednesday at 10 a.m. and we take things that we get for free or close to it and turn it into home decor that we sell or keep here at our house. We are gonna be working on a couple of Saturday's thrift haul projects because we've gotta get them done. Um, Zeb has, I don't know, like 14. Uh, yeah, seven tall over. ones and seven short ones. And I've already broken the, they had these little deals on the bottom, which Jamie's like, I wouldn't have even bought them because they had that. <laughs> I'm like, I can pull them off. So I did on most of them. I got to do one more, two, two more. more. And, and then, they, were, they were like two bucks each, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, and we thrifted them. A couple of them have sold. Some of them have not. We're removing the rhinestones. I'm going to be painting this mirror. If you guys want to buy the paint and products you're going to see us using, visit jamierayvintage.com. All the items are on there. I'm going to get started painting because I'm going to do lots of layers. And so I've got to get going. In this jar, I have half vintage mint, half paint blue in the cottage colors. We just did our sign, which that video is going to go up Friday. Yes. Friday we'll have that up. And this is just a leftover paint because I mix those two colors to get a pretty uh, Jamie Ray vintage-esque blue-green color for the sign at our shop. And I never waste anything, so I took the paint that was left over and I put it in this old, actually I think this had beets in it. This is one of my mom's beet jars. For a second, you're gonna hear me pull all this tape off. I'm sorry in advance. It's crackly and loud. But I have to get it off because I've got oh, to this, paint these lids separate. This brush didn't get washed very good. It's like really Do you need stiff. my brush? Yeah. Oh, there's there's these two brush options also. I just need something with movement. Okay. Yeah, I don't know. Put that, that one. That one needs soaked. Yeah. Thank you. So, I'm going to just get this base coat on here and then Zeb can give you the lowdown on what he's going to do with his... So I was going to do them all different, but Jamie made a good point. We have limited time and it'll just be easy to like we, we we always batch paint right so that's what's going on and she wanted to save these rhinestones hey i thought you could send them to debbie she wanted rhinestones I mean, for a cat i collar. guess maybe i could say save them they would make an okay cat collar i suppose all right i'm not a big rhinestone user when i'll I craft. save them they're not in bad shape they've got like little ties on them on the end that can be easily cut off i'm not going to do anything with them farther than that <laughs> okay let me show you real quick so you can use pliers i just have these uh Shoot, okay, and crescent wrench, that's what this is called. And I'm literally just breaking the glue because they're just glued on. And these are components, these are made, I don't know, someone went online and found a bunch of different things and they're all screwed together like this and this and this and this are all separate pieces. And then they've got these cups that they've epoxied onto the top with these lids. And I don't know where they got these cool little lids because I'm pretty sure they didn't come with these cups that they've glued on here because this was a total wedding hack, save some money DIY centerpiece. I don't know if they bought all those pieces independently. I don't know how much money they saved. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe they found them uh, somewhere super cheap or maybe someone made them. I mean, some of them do look like they're hand turned. Well, they're possible. not all completely the same. I'm just going to be over here for the next 20 minutes painting this. Well, I'm going to be doing the same. I love mirrors like this. They sell really well for us. We actually have a big stack of mirrors in the barn and frames that we need to get to. So I'm hoping this inspires might me. might do a mirror palooza. Yeah, to do a mirror palooza and get those all finished up. All right, and then there's a little, little piece here on the bottom sometimes the wood breaks with the glue and so i'm just scraping that off with the chisel and then i'll sand it too the nice thing about cottage colors it is all natural it has a built-in sealer i may not use all cottage color on here so i might have to wax some of this but i like to do different layers and i always pick like one color to get started with it will dry darker if you're used to the diy paint that always dries lighter and this one always throws people <laughs> off because it dries darker and it always kind of looks white on camera but i promise you it is a beautiful blue green all right, so what you see me doing here is like part of the wood has been held on with the glue. So just scraping that. And then I have a little piece of sandpaper to get that all the way down smooth so I don't have weird lumps where the paint was transitioned. See, maybe we should turn the camera off while you finish that. <laughs> I'm like, 
like this might be kind of boring with no live chat. No, it's fine. And they'll have live chat on their end. It's just us that won't, we won't see it. So hopefully you guys are having lively conversation amongst yourselves well, we'll right be, now. We might be on if we have signal because they're going to be driving to California yeah. when this goes. Let's see. When this goes on, we'll probably be, I'm hoping to be around or past St. George by then. There's like a storm brewing. We will see. There's a big storm. They're saying it's going to be the biggest, wettest storm we've had this winter. Um, and it's going to dump all in a day and a half. But it's supposed to start snowing tomorrow at like noon and not stop until six o'clock on Wednesday. So we're leaving town Wednesday morning. I thought it wasn't stopping until Thursday. Maybe Thursday, I don't know. We were leaving town Wednesday morning early, early. We'll see what the road conditions are like. I took the winter tires off the car in anticipation of driving a couple thousand miles to California in the warmer weather. I told him we should put it back on, but he said If it was we can get past like Fillmore area, then we'll be fine. Cause once you get, well, maybe Cedar. Cedar will get snow too. But once you get past Cedar, which is like two and a half, three hours south of us. About eight hours if the roads are bad. Yeah, eight <laughs> hours, for real, eight hours if the roads are bad. Um, it's smooth sailing past that. Well, and my niece is coming from Idaho, which is probably where, see, it feels like all storms originate in Idaho. This one's coming up from the south, actually. It's a really, oh, really? wet storm. It's like a... Okay, didn't know that. Well, good, hopefully she gets out easily on Tuesday night because she is puppy sitting. Yeah, and Odilia is flying out Tuesday and the airport's already, or the airline has already contacted us and been like, hey, um, weather advisory, things might be really delayed or canceled. So we'll see. Hopefully well, not we get... I don't have Odilia's ticket. That's through the school. I just have, Hopefully I just we know Odilia was telling me that. Oh. Hopefully we get out of here off to cheer nationals in time with this storm coming in. They've been working for a long time. They actually changed up their entire routine. They had some girls get injured. They had some girls quit. It's always that way. But I'm excited for their new routine because they showed it to us, was it last week? When yeah. we did the- Cheer showcase. Cheer showcase, yeah. And I really liked it. They did good. All right, I will get painting here eventually. I'm, I maybe will do a couple of them a little different, Am but I maybe off not. Camera? Yeah, you're off camera, Sorry, but that's okay. They can side. see your little hands swiping over here. Swiping the paint. I've got to I've got to get all the sides painted. Now the problem is, well, I guess I could just stand in front of the camera when I paint the front. Yeah, I can move it. That's why I asked you to put the drop cloth the other way so that way I could have it horizontal and I wouldn't have it so. Because oh. I'm short, I don't have long arms. Well, you can, I can trade you. You can paint these candlesticks. No, I don't I got want the stuff. Oh, we already them. talked about how I do not want to paint those candlesticks. <laughs> I could paint one of them, maybe three, but like 14. 14 of them. I'm going to, I'm going to, I might even add some salt wash to it just to thicken it up and one coat everything. I'm going to breeze through these. Some quickly. texture might be nice. But I thought that these would be really cool. You could take the lids off of them, but, um, I thought that they would be just cool, like for tea lights and stuff too. That is true. And well, you could also put like candy in them. Yeah. I'm sure they had tea lights in them. That's what I'm Maybe like a little floral or a topiary or something. And if you're real ambitious, you could probably heat gun this off and just have it a regular candlestick without that. Did I get all the rhinestones? One more, one more over here. A lot of rhinestones. And a lot of tape. I mean, the tape's not a bad idea. It keeps that lid on there tight. Yeah, our thrift stores are really good about that. Like if there's parts to it, they tape them together so that way they don't lose the parts. All right, let's look at all these. How many rhinestones do I have? I'll bedazzle my arm up. Because I think I threw a couple away the other night. So I probably only have like 10 or 12. It looked like you're selling something on QVC. Like check out the gorgeous texture <laughs> look at this. and shine of these rhinestones. Look at this drip. Drip. Oh, we're using the teenage. <laughs> Eliza has new words every day. It's almost comical. So you're going to get paint blue vintage mint mix on the drip there. All right. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I think we'll save them and send them to Debbie. They kind of look cool like that. It's almost like chainmail armor. Yeah, I have a stash of stuff that I gotta take when we go to California next month. 
hopefully we can go. We're waiting on the warehouse to tell us they'll have our paint samples ready for okay, us. Okay, so I only threw one away. I think I have 13 of these. There we go. Blingy, blingy. Someone probably just bought it in like a roll of lace. Honestly, rhinestones can get expensive. So that's why I was like, even though there's not really something we'd probably use, I can't get rid of them. Okay, I'm gonna move some of these up out of the way. <clears throat> They're gonna get the uh, old school. Oh, I missed some tapes. Two of them, three of them, four of them missing tape. Is there any sticky you need to get off for? No, okay? the sticky's, it's not really that sticky. I don't think this tape's been on there very long. Okay. But well, the thrift store that we got all this from, he changes that stuff out like, I think it said two weeks? Yeah. Every so two weeks. If it doesn't sell in two weeks, they pass it along. Yeah, we we're talking to the manager and he's like, he's like, just keep coming back every week because we, if it doesn't sell, we have tags with dates on them and we go through and clear the shelves so that it just keeps rotating and we either send it on to another thrift store because maybe it'll sell um, like another Deseret industry because maybe it'll sell at a different demographic. Um, and some thrift stores don't get as many donations and some get tons, like our American Fork Store one that we go to, like they literally have huge trailers out back where they're loading half their donations into and just shipping them out. Some of them never see the light of day at the thrift store yeah. they were traded into. I think they also do that to keep like a decent variety. Yeah. Because obviously a thrift store does not have control over what's donated, right? So they just want a good variety. Well, and they do tell you no sometimes. I've had them tell me no on a few things like, um, like dresser tops without the bottom sort of thing. And I've just, after a couple times, I just stopped taking it. I'm like, okay, they oh. don't want that. All right, I've almost painted this whole situation and now I gotta like dig out the paint where it's pulled up. That's the next task because it like pulls up and then takes forever to dry. And I am finally painting. I'm gonna bring you guys in close right in here. Are you doing like a bunch of waxes and stuff to that? Yeah, I have to dry it and then it's gonna get a white dry, like not really a dry, well I guess a dry brush. I'm gonna just hit the top with white, let that dry. Clear wax, dark wax. I need gold wax, so I'm gonna have to find it. If we don't have that, I might have to run to the so shop. So the detail, this actually showed the detail pretty well. A lot of times we get these and they're like one note and you gotta really wax them or paint them to make the detail pop. This one was already doing that, so we're gonna have to bring that back. It just, um, it had that weird splatter silver and it was missing paint in some areas and not in a good way. Yeah, so. look how fun that is. It's like a floral design. Well, there's a lot of like inlays, like there's like molds on top of here. Like they've put, they've layered it up. So it's pretty cool. And don't worry if I get paint on the mirror, I'll just razor blade it off. Yes, I know I can tape it. <laughs> Taping is more work, I think. And you still, Occasionally, every I don't time I you. tape without fail, there's still some paint that pushed up somewhere. So I'm just like, yeah, no. All right, I'm gonna, just get don't flip paint. paint on my project. I'm gonna get to paint slapping here. I probably should help you. You might, while you're waiting for yours to dry, come help I'm me. I'm gonna have some. to, I'm gonna heat gun this. Come help me, oh, okay. Cause it won't dry within an hour that we have allotted for this show. All Especially right, my where brush it pulls is wet. Up. I wanted better coverage than that out of this old school. So I'm oh, gonna it's have, cause your brush. I just washed it and the brush is wet. Just do a light coat and then by the time you get done painting all of them, that one will be dry. Yeah. So we're doing old school and white wax. Yep. You're gonna wet distress them a little. If I get real wild and ambitious, if I think it's too one note, then I might do like some, some uh, golden rule or maybe like a dry brush, a copper on here. But I don't know, like that's kind of getting to be a lot. That's, that's too much. Times 17. 14. 14, 14. What did I have said 17th? I don't know. I only have one giant mirror, but this mirror, let's see, those are, here's the thing, people think, oh mirror, big money, right? I paid $10, I sold it for $224. It's probably gonna cost me more than the website charged for shipping. So it's probably more like 160 by the time I pay somebody to box it and the extra overage and shipping. And those are $22 each times 14. Well, and some, no, some are 24. 
20 in summer 20. 20 so to 24. I guess 22. And we only pay two dollars each, so really, I think there's more profit in those than this big fancy mirror. Twenty times fourteen. What's that? Two hundred eighty. Um, I don't know. Yes. Two hundred eighty, and you paid thirty. Well, Twenty-eight dollars. Twenty-eight dollars for them. So yeah, I think you're you're better off. But and there, it might be more work than that. We'll see when we're done. We'll see who finishes first. Because I've already spent about 15 minutes pulling all these things off and sanding them. There we go. Now we're getting some better I'm coverage. just saying you can make money from not fancy items. Oh, yes. For and sure. luckily this one sold. Sometimes I have big mirrors like this and it takes a while, whereas those they may not all sell right away, but you'll sell half of them probably in the next couple of weeks. Yeah, I will get a return on my investment before you do, most well, likely. Well, I will. In this case, Did your this mirror just... sell? Yeah. Oh, your mirror already sold. Never mind. <laughs> okay, it is a really cool mirror. Like, Where's the heat gun? Um, it might be over here. I don't know if I put it up. You dropped... Oh, I remember it fell on the floor. And it never got picked up. All right, I'm going to move this out of the way. I'm going to put this in water along with this other brush. I mean, already it's pretty cool. You could just dark wax this and it would be like super fun. You're gonna do golden stuff though, right? Yeah. Are you gonna try to make it look like ours over there a little bit? Um, I mean, I it's could, a little fancier. but I feel like this is so fancy it doesn't need that extra texture. Extra texture? Is that a thing, extra texture? Just gonna heat gun it and we'll get some white on it. So if this is looking like a dark navy, it's pretty close to a dark navy once it's sealed up. Um, it's like a smoky blue-gray color. I might, I'm gonna have to paint the underside. It looks like everything's gonna need probably what I like to call a coat and a half because this white is so bright and shiny, even though this old school covers really well, the shinier your paint finish, or your whatever you're painting, um, you might have to do more coats because it just mushes the paint around instead of sitting down on there. I'm just digging paint out of holes, literally. There's like paint all pulled up in this and it would take forever to dry, even with a heat gun. So as I'm drying it, I'm pulling the paint back and then drying it before it pulls back into the little holes. I'm actually looking forward to this summer when hopefully we've got our spray gun set up and yes. we can batch clear paint out with the, the cottage barn. color. Like that's gonna be so great for smalls. Well, and we've got the new colors coming out. Because they have a built-in sealer, which just makes so nice, especially when you're layering things up because then it gives you a kind of a resist between layers. I'm really excited for the new colors. I will be when they get here. They're coming. So I'm getting a little hint on the glass. I'm not super worried about that because I'm probably going to wet this dress and whatever I get on there, I can pull off. I don't know what this is in the cracks of this, but it's kind of like dark and textured, whatever they, so it's getting into my paint, which is fine but I don't know what they painted it with initially. Is it like bleed, bleeding through? Well, see how it's like dark right there? It's like dark wax or something. Oh. But it's from the factory, which fa factories don't use like the same type of wax that we no, would use. No, they don't. It's fine because it's gonna have so many layers it won't truly matter. So about 30 minutes have elapsed. I think Zeb is really feeling the magnitude of what 14 of identical items, even one solid color is. Um, and I, it just takes a while when there's so much detail for this paint to dry. And one of the things with the cottage colors is that it is hard to heat gun it all the way because it will bubble. So you just gotta be careful. But now that that's dry, I'm going to dry brush on crinoline. And that's gonna go fairly quickly because I'm just gonna go over the top and not get down in all those details. So it's not gonna pull up the way that the other paint did. And Zeb's just gonna be white wax until the cows come so home. So this is white underneath. It's kind of shiny. It was like a glossy type paint finish or sealer that they had on here. 
Um, I've got the old school on. It took like a coat and a half. Not that meaning like just a couple little touch up spots. Um, and then now I'm gonna white wax it and I didn't put any clear wax on. I'm gonna rub this off here with a dry rag and some of this um, old school is probably gonna come off when that happens. So that's gonna be my distressing as well. Uh, but pretty quick, pretty simple finish. If you were just doing a couple of these candlesticks, you could probably knock these out in about 10, 15 minutes if you had a heat gun to dry them up. So do keep that in mind when you are out junking, that the more you buy, the more you gotta paint. But it is gonna look good in the shop. I know like three or four have already sold, so it will be a fun display to have in the shop. All right, so let's get up close here. I'm just wiping that off. I'm, I don't know that I'm gonna paint the bottoms. I will make sure that I get all the, uh, the price tags off the bottoms. That's, or you could just distress them. Well, it doesn't look that bad and you know, it's white underneath. Okay, so some of this white is coming off, or some of the old school is coming off um, as I buff off this white wax. Um, so we got a little distress on the high points and I've got white wax sitting down right where I want it to be. Just make sure that glass is good and clean. All right, that's gonna stay pretty dark like that. It'll dry up a little bit and lighten up, but for the most part, that's, that's what it's gonna be. And I'm gonna do a bunch of these. Let me get a lid done so we can see the whole thing together. I'm almost done with my dry brush. I'll hit this with a heat gun real quick. Then I will get going clear oh, let waxing. Let bring them in close so they can see that. Okay, I'm gonna clear wax and then dark wax. I have to clear wax where the crinoline is. Okay, so the dry brush, you're just using crinoline over the top. And this is vintage mint and haint blue mix yeah, underneath. Half and half. After I dry brush, I do like to like come back, step away, make sure that I've got, it does not have to be even because I want it to look old and layered. There you go, there's a good view of it, kind of darkened the camera up a little bit. It's very subtle. Yeah, it's gonna get less subtle the more layers I put on here. And the crinoline will get darker once it's sealed. I'm gonna, I, I had a couple places where the paint came off more than I wanted to. I rubbed too hard, so I put some more white wax on there because while the white paint coming through underneath is fine, I didn't want like a big shiny streak to look like it'd been scratched and it kind of looked like it'd been scratched. So white wax on there to dull that up and it's, it looks more chippy now. I just gotta heat gun this and then get the clear wax out and then the dark wax. Well, in dry brushing it like that, that's not gonna take any time at all. Nope. And then I gotta search and dig deep for the gold wax, because I have, still haven't found that yet. Maybe oh, that's what I should have done while I was waiting for. It's over there. You're sure? Yep, okay. I saw it like a day ago. We get asked a lot, is the white wax a final coat? Can it be used as the final sealer? And the answer is absolutely yes. It is the same creamy formula as the clear wax. It's just been tinted white. Oops, I'm kicking stuff over here. Where did, I, where did my wax brush go, do you know? There was a dark wax brush oh, over no, here. And then, yeah, they're both up over there, up to the front. Okie dokie, time for clear wax. This is just gonna make a barrier so that way this crinoline doesn't get too dirty looking because the, the um, Haint Blue already has a built-in sealer, but the crinoline does not. Oh, you spilled a 
lot right there. <laughs> and I didn't spill. I oh, is that, that your dry, dry brush? brush? <laughs> I'm like, I just put my hand in something wet. Yeah, I use that to dry brush. So for me, this final finish on mine is gonna be pretty fast. I've already got pretty much two done, gotta do a lid for the other one. But just brush it on, wipe it off before you let it cure up, walk away, come back in the morning. You can buff it to a high sheen if you want. Hopefully that paint's cured on there a little bit more, but I would just leave it how it is. I'm gonna, I'm gonna wipe this back and then just let them dry up as they, dry up overnight as they cure and leave it. Now I am ready for my dark wax. I'm gonna work in smaller sections with this though. Oh, let me bring them close again. Oh, you know what I missed right here? I can tell, tell where I mixed with it because it's lighter. Where's my wax brush? There it is. Okay, I'll zoom in. I missed like a whole section. Oh, we don't need to zoom in yet. She's just clear waxing. No, I'm good. I just... Okay, so... That actually makes the crinoline a lot more uh, noticeable too, because it darkened the crinoline up. Yeah, well, because it's more wax. porous versus the other one, the, the cottage colors paint is not absorbing it because it's got a built-in sealer. I mean, I did put clear wax, but yes, the, cot the cottage color will not absorb it the way even clear waxed crinoline will. All right, gold is going on now. How do you feel about the gold? You can definitely tell where it isn't and where it is. I mean, I like it because the whole, every layer leading up to the gold was waiting for the gold, in my opinion. So I know it's not everybody's jam, but I want it to look like a really old, worn paint finish. And I think that it, it achieved that. And it will, the like clear wax, We'll tone down a little bit in a few spots, but I think it's good. On the gold, I'm just brushing over the top, whereas the dark, I was trying to get it down into the grooves. So it's kind of the opposite. I'm not pushing super hard. That's just going over the top? Yeah, it's just going over the top. Are you gonna wipe that back too? Are you gonna leave no, it? No, I'm gonna leave it and let it really, I'm not putting that much on to where I've gotta wipe it back. I'm almost like dry brushing wax. All right, I might just do it with my hand. Just kind of wipe off some of the high spots. What do you think? Is it bougie? I like it. I mean, I put it in my house, so. All right, so we cheated a little on this Waste Not Wednesday. We stopped, we started, and we're gonna cheat one more time. We are gonna take some pictures so you guys can see these up close and finished in all their glory. Um, if you wanna know- <laughs> All their glory. <laughs> in all their glory. If you wanna know the products we use, I'll give you a little rundown. Um, we've got Haint Blue mixed with vintage linen, 50-50, then crinoline, clear wax, dark wax, and gold wax for this mirror. And every step was important to get the layers necessary for the overall look. And then Zeb was more simple, but a lot of work because he's still waxing um, old I'm gonna school. I'm gonna be here till tomorrow. Old school and white wax together make a really great stone look. And I think he really just kind of added a little bit more, I don't know, upscale. They've got these. some more interest other yeah. than just being like straight white with a lid on them. Now the wax is really making all the brush strokes pop and a little bit of distress shows a lot more of these details that were actually here that kind of got lost in the white. All right, now that you're almost done, would you have bought this many? Yeah, because it actually hasn't been that bad. It might have been all total, I might have spent an entire hour, not including dry time, not including dry time, but an entire hour sitting here doing this. And by the time they're all sold, what did we figure up? About 280 bucks, less the $28 and a few supplies. So Is your creativity fulfilled? Oh, I never worry about that. 
I can do stuff all day. This was, see, <laughs> I'm the opposite. This mirror was super fun. My creativity was filled. I love the way it turned out. Um, if you want to buy these paint products, visit jamierayvintage.com. And if you like this video, for sure, to, for sure, be sure to give us a thumbs up and subscribe to Jamie Ray Vintage for more. DIY.